Hello everyone, this is Camille with Mimi Journals, and today I wanted to talk to you guys about my my main journaling supplies. Um, so I've been doing a lot of journaling videos, so I thought it would be cool to um, just talk about the stuff that I use in those journals. Um, so I will go through my pencil case, I will show you guys um, my main source of my sticker collection. I have a lot of others, but this is like the main hub. It's very messy. And then I'll talk to you for a second about this, which I use a ton. Um, so actually let's go ahead and do this first because it will be the fastest. So this is a Canon Ivory, um, little portable, uh, digital printer. Um, it connects through Bluetooth to my cell phone, and I just print pictures off of my phone from this. Um, it is a zero ink, um, like thermal printer. Uh, so these printers hold 10 sheets of photo sticker paper at a time. Um, their little packages look like this, and these usually come in a pack of like 50, um, so like five of these, because it's 10 per, per little pack pretty easy. Um, so this, I use those uh, pictures primarily in my memory planner, which I have a different video of, so I'm not going to do um, a flip through of that, but I will show you an example of those pictures just for those who have not seen that video. And I will do both, like print the full picture, the full size, and I'll also do collages and then just like cut them if I want smaller pictures. Um, so I will show that. So like these, all of these are printed with this guy and these are not the full size. Um, so I just collage them and then cut them pretty easy. And I will show you a full sized one. So that um, looks like a full sized one, but I honestly, I think I might've trimmed it a little bit just so that it better fit. All of these are printed from that printer. Again, just collaging and cutting down. Um, yeah, so like usually the full size, um, photo for, here we go. So this is a full size photo. This is a full size. This is a full size. Um, the full sizes for this planner are pretty big. Um, so like example, if you put it horizontally, it does not fit in the week, in the day's, um, border. It goes, uh, bleeds over on both sides. And then vertically, it takes up just shy of half the day. So they're pretty big for this format. Um, so just kind of depending on what happened that day, I will make them purposely smaller so that they better fit uh, the format of the page as a whole. Um, so you can see that I tend to do that a lot, actually. So like these ones are about half a page each and I just sliced them and then like turned them so that they fit better. Um, yeah. And then as far as the actual pictures that I use in here, um, a lot, a lot of the pictures are pictures I've taken and a lot aren't. Um, a lot are just like spent time with that person um, or did that thing or whatever, and I just wanted to document it. So then I go and find pictures that I like of those people so that I have that document. Cause I, you know, as much as I'm a photographer, um, I don't pay, take pictures of people like every single time I hang out with them. So a lot of times I have to pull pictures from, um, other places to have pictures of those people for those days which I think is pretty normal. I don't know, I, it's normal to me. And uh, I just think it's like a really wonderful tool for journaling. It uh, makes it so much easier to scrapbook. It makes it so much more personal. Like I just absolutely love that I can just take my phone and take this little printer anywhere um, and have pictures of my life in my, in my, uh, in my journals and stuff. Um, Couple things to note about this printer. There's a lot of different printers that are like this. Um, and then the price range is like, I think like the cheapest one is maybe like 70 or $80. And like the most expensive one is like one, I don't know, 120 or something. So there's definitely like a price range like a, that you can get where you can get cheaper ones or more expensive ones, but they really do about the same thing. Um, 
the print quality can vary slightly from brand to brand. I wouldn't say that it varies a ton, but some print naturally cooler and some print naturally warmer, that kind of thing. Some print naturally lower contrast, some print naturally higher contrast. So there is differences in printing uh, quality. So that's something to be aware of um, if you are interested in getting yourself a mini printer, um, a mini phone printer thing. I don't know why I like tried to correct myself and then I said it worse the second time. <laughs> Good job. Uh, not sure what that was about. Um, so like for example with this one I learned very early on that bumping up the contrast in a way that kind of looks ugly on screen looks better when it's printed. Um, it just does. So like I'll bump the contrast pretty high before I print it. And then when it prints out, it looks like more, like much more normal. Um, and so you kind of learn like the quirks of your printer um, when you get one. This one comes in a bunch of different colors. I wasn't actually the biggest fan of the rose gold, but I was impatient and it was the only one that was available. So I got it. There's another one that has like a cute mint color that I would have preferred, but that's fine. Um, and the other thing to be aware of with this there's like one other thing. Oh, um, the battery life is super short, which is the most obnoxious thing. Um, so as much as I love this thing to death, because I really do, um, it, you know, makes collaging like so much easier. Um, it runs out of battery pretty fast. And like this button, you hold it down and turn it on. And then if you're not like immediately printing it'll turn off really fast so those two quirks are like the most obnoxious thing to me but I just put up with it because I love having these pictures and it's so much easier than like collaging them in photoshop and then printing them out on a big printer and then cutting them and then like there's like so many other steps to take if I didn't have this whereas like if I just have to turn it on like I'll like pause and be like looking through my pictures and it'll turn off which is so annoying um but if that's the only thing I have to deal with to, like, make this part of my life easier, like, that's fine. So I'll stop rambling about that now. Um, so I use that thing all the time. And then the other thing that I use a lot, I don't use it in all of my planners by any stretch, but is stickers. So my stickers are such a mod podge of things. Um, I have stickers from... Um, artists that I really like, like the classic ones, right? So like, um, Toffee Banana, um, Happy Daya, Coffee Monsters Co. Um, what's the other one that I really like? Um, that has the munchkins. Mm, of course I forget what it's called. Um, I'm guessing people who watch these might actually know. Happy Daya, let's see. Paper Shire, um... Those are all just Etsy. Well, they at least started out on Etsy. A lot of them have their own websites and do their own thing now. Um, yeah. And then I have a lot of, like, personal use stickers. So just stickers from um, art that I found on the internet that obviously I will not sell and I will not, like, do anything with except for my own enjoyment. So I have a lot of personal use stickers in here. Um, I have a lot of clip art that I bought off Etsy on here or in here. And I have a lot of stuff that I drew myself in here. So it's just a mod podge of like everything. Um, but I am super into visual uh, symbolism. Um, just from my own like record keeping and my own whatever. Um, so like I will uh, assign characters to people in my life. And then when I hang out with those people, I will put the little sticker of the little character. Um, like on the memory planner thing. So like, for example, uh, which ones am I cool with talking about? Um, so like this one I use for when I hang out with my dad. Um, I use Iron Man um, stickers to represent my dad. Um, this is one of my friends. This is my friend Lizzie. I use this one to represent Lizzie. Another friend, another friend. Um, another friend let's see so most of these are my friends <laughs> um yeah 
let's see, I had one drawing that I had done of Primrose from Hunger Games that I had been using for my little sister, but I lost the original digital document of that drawing, and then I ran out of stickers for it, which is a terrible combination. So I don't know if I should redraw it, or if I should keep digging and hopefully recover the digital document of it. I don't know, I'm on the fence on what I should do. Um, but I like having stickers for my sister. Um, this is of my friend Jen, just reminded me of her. So a lot of times what it is, is like something about that character, either the personality of that character, like in the show or whatever that it's from, or something about the way that character looks or just reminds me of that person and that just like sticks in my brain and then it just becomes that person's sticker. It's kind of how that works. Um, just like this is my friend Tiana. Um, for friends, and there's other friends where like, like jokes will happen or whatever and just like life will happen and then like there'll be an association there so then I'll find a sticker that like fits that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'll have characters to symbolize friends is the point of that. That was a really long ramble. Um, I will also have characters that symbolize just different things that are like, gosh, I feel like it only makes sense in my head. <laughs> I feel like when I try to explain it to other people, they're like, that sounds weird. Um, so like, for example, these are different princesses and different like female characters and um, a lot of these symbolize like moods or like felt like, okay, okay. How do I explain this in a way that makes sense? So like this one, this, this particular art of Ariel, um, I will use this when I feel like I've done something kind of out of my own comfort zone or like something that I like, oh, I don't normally do, but I'm like proud that I did it. And I'm like, oh, that went well. Like that was out of my comfort zone, but I like, I like how that turned out or I feel like that went well. I'll use this sticker. Why I make that association with Ariel, I don't really know. I mean, I guess she like leaves her home world to like become a human. Who knows? I'm sure there's somewhere in my brain where that makes sense. Um, but yeah, and then like with this artwork of Luna and this artwork of Hermione, um, I will use these for days or for events or for whatever where I felt like I learned something from that or that or that that situation required growth from me and like required me to learn in that experience. Um, so I associate it with learning basically. Um, so I will put these down for that. I'll use both of these for that. I'll use this one when it feels more like lighthearted and whimsical, hence like Luna being like spacey and whimsical. Um, and then I'll use this one with Hermione when it feels more like deep and serious. Um, yeah, I'm a ridiculous human being. Um, this I will use in a similar way as this, hence they're both Ariel, but I'll use this one for like bigger question mark events, if that makes sense. Um, this one, I just use randomly when I think that it fits the mood. It kind of has this like playful vibe thing. I don't know. I don't know. Some of them, I'm just like, you know what? That suits it. In my brain, for some reason, the way that looks suits the way that feels, and then I just put them together. Um, that happens, for sure. But yeah, all the like Harry Potter ones, to me, are related to like learning. And then this one is Chihiro... Um, this is art that belongs to me. Um, I paid the commercial license to use it. I had it commissioned from a different artist. Um, and I will use this oftentimes where I feel like I did a lot that day. Like, basically like errands, I guess, kind of. I don't know. I don't really know how to describe that. Um, I'm not going to go through all of these because that would be absolutely ridiculous. But as you see, that's how I view my stickers. My stickers kind of um, have symbolic meaning to me. And then they show different emotions or different like mental states. Um, so like this one is like when the day was hard, but I still felt like I was strong in that experience. I'll use this one. Um, this is when the day went excellently and I was very happy about it. 
this one is like the more extreme version of that where like I was just felt like a total boss that day and I was like yeah that freaking rocked I will use that one and then this day was just like oh this day was great and it made me happy I use this one um stuff like that um this is a drawing of Katniss uh, Everdeen that I drew myself and I think it's adorable and I love using it um, and I use her when it's been a really hard day and I felt like I it took a lot out of me to get through that day but I was resilient despite that so I use her for an example of resiliency um, this is I use this for anxiety I use this for like shutting down um, yeah, so like a lot of emotional symbolism will go into various artworks. And then I have standard stickers where like you know what they mean, right? So like I worked on my iPad and I took photos and I, you know, cut stickers and like, so I have all like the classic, more traditional ways of using stickers. I have tons of those as well. Um, it's just a combination. Um... I tend to love like nerdy things, so there will be a lot of nerdy references. There will be a lot of like, this is like a princess, one of my favorite princesses because I have also have curly hair. So like nerdy reference, also emotional reference, um, that kind of thing. Yeah, bigger versions of those. Um, I have... Like these cute, like, I don't know if they're supposed to be lions or chows. Like chow, like the dog. I don't know why I, like, clarified that as if you guys didn't know what chows were. My bad. Um, not sure what they're supposed to be, but they're adorable and I love them. And they also just, prove, like, serve as emotional symbolism for me. And then I have classic, like, emoji stickers from Coffee Monsters Co. Um... So obviously those just directly show the emotion. Um, that is a character from Yu Yu Hakusho that I use. That I, did I draw that? No, I did not draw that. I found that art somewhere. Um, what else, what else? I have some like Studio Ghibli, of course. Cute, 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 cute. Um, I do a weird combination of like cute and artsy. And it's kind of all over the place. Um, I have plenty for like, like chores and errands and all that kind of stuff. Like the normal things that people use stickers for versus me being a freaking weirdo and using them for all this like symbolic emotional stuff. It's kind of what you get when you get somebody who has worked as a counselor for six years and you hand them character stickers apparently. Um, so that's what that is. This video is turning out to be way longer than I expected it to be. So I apologize. I thought this was going to be like, oh, I'm just a little, like really a little quick thingy where I show you the stuff I use and then I just talk my freaking mouth off. Um, so this is my pen case, um, obviously, uh, but this is all the stuff that I use that I, they're like my main grab bag of stuff that goes everywhere with me um and that i use to to write and draw and all that so this is one of those really tiny paper cutters which is adorable and i love it um and i don't use it that often but when i do it's very useful um i use these as references in case i want to write before my pictures are ready so i also have a polaroid printer which is of similar size different brand um that I can print Polaroids on. So that's my Polaroid reference. This is my, um, the printer I showed you earlier. This is my reference for those in case I want to like, like, you know, draw a spot for it so I don't forget, but then I am able to write before the picture's in kind of thing. Um, I have a mini ruler. Should be obvious why that's in there. Um, these are the main, main pens that I use. So, I use a Micron 01, um, let's see if it'll focus, it is like, you can't even see it, I don't think, um, very, very thin, I think there's only one size thinner than this, and this one, on top of it being thin, it's also very well loved, so it's slightly beat up, 
and the one the one issue I have with microns I use them constantly so obviously they're pens that I love tremendously but I burn through them very quickly or fairly quickly because um maybe I'm just too heavy-handed I don't know but the the nib yeah that's the right word the nib will like slowly start to like recede in when I use it I don't know if that's just a me thing or if that's just like a everybody has that experience with microns but eventually it'll get fatter than when it started because it'll get kind of like smashed and like I try I try to be like very light-handed and very like dainty but apparently I'm terrible at that because the nibs will get like different um this is a Tombow Furunos Furunosuke Furun I don't know if I said that right uh brush pen so this is what I do my bold um lettering with this pen is absolutely gorgeous I am not like that good at it but I really love it um and the ink is really beautiful this is a random pen that I found one day, and I was like, oh, that's cool. I do that a lot, by the way. Um, and I'm on the fence about it, because I like the way it feels. I like the way it holds. I like a lot, a lot about it. And then how it feels on the paper when I'm writing, that's the part that I go back and forth on. So it's a very interesting nib, and it gets a little bit scratchy. Not a lot, but a little. And sometimes I like love that scratchy feeling and other times I get annoyed by it and I have no idea why. Um, but that is there for when I want it. And it's kind of similar to a Micron, but it has a different like feel. Um, it's wetter, I will say that. So this dries faster, this dries slower. Um, these two are literally the exact same pen, just one in blue and one in black. Um, these pens I am obsessed with. I used to have a different favorite that I would use constantly. I probably have it sitting over here somewhere. So these used to be my favorite. And now I've switched over to these. So this is a Energel Liquid Gel Ink Pentel 0.7. Um, and I was obsessed with these for like a really long time. The issue I had with them is that eventually the ink would start fading. So even when the cartridge wasn't done, the ink would get less and less dark as time went on. I think it's just exposure, like the ballpoint being exposed to air um, or something. Um, and so it's like drier as time goes on kind of thing. Um, wasn't a fan of that. Um, and I don't like when I have to like like scratch to get it going again. Whereas I very rarely ever had to do that with this pen, but I did feel like even though I didn't have to sit there and like to like uh, w wake it up again, um, it still would become more dull over time, which I don't like that. Um, I like pens that are like, the ink is like dark, like dark, like through and through. Um, so these, um, which are now my all time favorite and I like love them so much, it's freaking ridiculous. Uh, Uniball Vision Elite. I think they're 0.7. They're definitely fat. Um, they're also Japanese, which I did not realize until looking closer at this. Um, which makes sense. I tend to be obsessed with Japanese stuff. These pens are so, so, so buttery. They're just like breeze, like, psh, like silk. They are like silk. It is freaking amazing, and I love them so much. I know I'm being super repetitive. Um, I will say, because of how silky they are, they are very wet. Um, so it gets, like, the look I want. It gets the dark, like, consistent dark I want. It's, like, smooth and buttery, but I am left-handed. So every single time that I write with them, which I haven't done much writing today, so you don't see it, I get smear, ink smears all in my pinky. Um, so I have to be careful writing because my hand will pick it up as I go by. Um, it still dries pretty fast for how gorgeous of an ink it is and how like, dark and vibrant it is, but it will stay wetter than other pens. Um, I love them so much that I tend to have them like freaking everywhere 
and I tend to have like backups because I write a lot. And so I burn through pens faster than a lot of people you probably know. Um, so in this main compartment is just a mod podge of pens that I want to have on hand. So for now, it is these colors of Tombows. Um, so I know these don't really look like they go together, but look. Um, so these I use a lot in my daily planner and just to ju just put accent colors and stuff, actually, including this one. Um, so I use those as accent colors in my daily, daily planner and they're gorgeous and I love them and I love the vintage look. So that's what those are there for. These are just, I just have like a thing about this, like, I don't even know if fuchsia is the right way to describe it. But this like magenta, bright, like super vibrant, pinkish, reddish, magenta-ish color. I am like obsessed with this color that like sometimes I feel like only exists in my head. Um, and so I bought three different pens that are almost the same color um, as the color I'm thinking of. I think one of them actually is super super close to the color that lives in my head and the other two aren't but they're still really cool so i carry these around i just recently put them in here actually because i started to um draw with my sketchbook or draw in my sketchbook again so i wanted them to be available for when i'm drawing um so that's that the other pens that live in here is like i said i'm obsessed with that weird color um so i got a sharpie in that color so that's in there and then in case I want accent colors in my planner um, that are not like drawing, they're like writing, I have these. You can see that there's like a certain color, um, color wheel, color, color something that I like am kind of obsessed with right now. Like these vintage colors and then like accent colors to those vintage colors and then pink. That's like my thing right now. I don't know why. Um, this I just tried at random because it looks cool and it is cool. I don't use it a ton, but when I do use it, I like the navy. I like navy. Um, this I want to get into using gold accent color, gold, or just like gold in my stuff, and I really have been terrible at it. But it walks around in here with me to remind me to do it, and then I don't do it. Um, this is my go to sketchbook ballpoint pen i draw almost exclusively in ballpoint pen um which is a habit that i learned from a friend and um i do it because it forces me to learn from every mistake i make so i don't draw in pencil because um you can just erase which i'm sure my art would be a lot prettier if i drew in pencil because like I said, you can erase. Um, so you can compensate for every mistake you make. Whereas when I draw with these, um, once it's there, it's there. And I just have to live with it. Um, but I feel like that challenge that I set for myself made it so that I learned a lot faster. It also made it so that I kind of have weird things that I do to compensate. So there definitely is a double-edged sword there where I need to like pay attention to some of my bad habits. Um, that I developed to compensate for the lack of like leniency if that makes sense but I do fe feel like I learned so much so fast by being a pen artist these pens are super cheap they come in a like a pack of like freaking like 10 or 20 for like five bucks or whatever they're really cheap but this specific one is the one that I like using there's a lot of ballpoints or a lot of pens that are like this that I don't like but I like this one um, as most stationary lovers, sorry, I have dogs, so, like, sometimes you just see little, like, dog hairs on stuff. Um, most stationary lovers know what this brand is, but in case you don't, these are mild liners. Um, they are just pretty highlighters. <laughs> they are, um, dual-sided, so the standard highlighter side on this one, and then the thinner on this one. Um... I'm a big fan of, like, this sunset yellow, 
like that warm some people call it mustard yellow but i really don't associate it with that um i associate it with like the warmth of the sun so i'm obsessed with that color so this isn't like standard highlighter yellow this is like sunset yellow and then i really like gray <laughs> i know that's i'm a weird person i just accept that about myself um so i love gray so i have gray highlighters because that's what people who love gray do, apparently. And then I have a backup red Energel Pentel pen. Um, this I can use for anything, but it's also a backup for my five-year Hobonichi that I write in red in. So that is all. That is all of the stuff that I use as my main stationary, um, yeah like main writing supplies and and planner supplies um i don't know how interested you guys are in seeing like my so my uh, like drawing stuff um so if you are interested please let me know um because i definitely made this uh youtube channel as a like journaling stationary like that bullet journaling all that kind of stuff um channel but i do do art so if that is something you guys um would be interested in or would like to see or whatever just let me know um i might end up putting up videos of it anyways i don't really know yet i haven't really made up my mind um because i honestly don't know how much like time i'm gonna have to draw um, so I haven't decided if that's going to be an active part of the channel or not, or if that's just going to be like a random thing and I'll be like, oh, for those who aren't interested in art, like, sorry, you can like skip this video. Um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what I, we'll see what we do. Um, what, what we do. We'll see what I do. But those are all of my main supplies. My, this is my everyday carry for pens. This is my primary um, thing for photos and then obviously I had that big chunky boy um, for stickers so hope that was interesting um, hope that was inspiring and I look forward to hearing about anything that you guys use what your everyday carries are if you guys use some of the same supplies as me or if you're interested in seeing those supplies at work or whatever um, just let me know, and thank you so much for watching, and I will talk to you guys again soon. Bye.